Hello and welcome back to the channel. This morning we're answering another forum question from the Fresh Service Forum. So the question today was about updating a ticket subject when specific information is provided on the incident form. So the poster didn't give me a whole lot of details, so I'm just going to give you my interpretation of what they were asking and, and what's possible. So what they said was when uh, a specific field is completed on the incident form, which may be optional, they wanted to update the ticket subject to include the information from that field, and they've referred to an ID. So what we're going to do today in our demo is just look at our incident form in the portal, and here you can see we've added a third party reference field. Now for this demo, I haven't hidden that or set any triggers on it with business rules. You could do if you wanted to. So if you wanted to only show that field under certain circumstances, you'd use business rules. But for the purposes of this, we're gonna keep it short. So what we've done is set up a workflow that when we say our issue relates to IT, uh, I'm having an issue with my Jabra, uh, Jabra doesn't unmute for example and maybe i've got a third party reference for some reason so i'm just gonna in my pretend say that's my third party reference because i've already raised a ticket with someone else it's probably obviously more likely that it would be sap or uh an id i think this poster was referring to like you employee id or that sort of thing it can be anything and then what we're going to do is just hit submit and our workflow is going to recognize that this field is uh not empty and it's going to run so hit submit and obviously I am logged in as an agent. So that has taken me directly around the back and you can see that my I ticket subject has been automatically updated with my ID. So my various workflows have run with my, in my demo instance and we can see here's my example, update the ticket subject with optional fields. And it's a very simple workflow. I know the APIs and expressions can look complicated, but it isn't. So what we've said in our workflow is incident is raised because we're using the something is broken form on my demo. We're saying our condition is that field is not empty. So obviously if it is empty, we don't need to update this ticket subject. The workflow will just skip and not continue. We then make our new subject. Now this is one of the limitations in Fresh. If you're trying to concatenate um, strings together, you have to nest your concatenations. So if you want to do more than two, you have to nest them. So that's what we've got here. So we've got concatenate, initially the prefix of ID space, uh, dash space. Then we say the value in our third party ticket reference. Then we concatenate again with a space, because uh, otherwise Fresh doesn't like it when you put a space around your placeholders and then the rest of the ticket subject. Now, obviously you can make that whatever you want to make it, put any keywords you want to put in there, not a problem, um, but that's just how you would do that quick. And then we update the ticket. So we're using a web request here. We're using a put call. This is my endpoint. So this is my instance for when we do these videos, we say ticket ID, and then we have to remember to put underscore numeric on there. Otherwise it puts INC or SR in front of it and it won't work. And just for completeness, we've put bypass mandatory equals true. So what the reason for doing that is on some instances that have far more uh, mature setups, this is just my demo. It, um, you may have other mandatory information that we just want to ignore because we're just updating the subject. So it fails less often. We've saved my credentials. That's covered in another video on how to do that. And then we've got a really simple payload that just says ticket subject, the output of our expression E1 in um, inverted commas at speech marks. And then if I un undid that and scrolled it down, you'd see two more curly braces. That's it. I should really show you because you won't know what I mean. There we go. So ticket, subject, curly brace one, and then there's a closing that out. Should be two there. Surprise that ran. There you go. So that's our payload, dead straightforward, and it runs through. Now I like to generally, when I'm doing this for customers, put another condition box afterwards that says, did that run? Did it work? And if not, notify, but this is my demo instance. I'm not going to do that. If you're going to do it, then you would just kind of say condition after my web request, put this back into draft. And we just say uh, web request update status code is greater than, oh, sorry, greater than or equal to 400. And if that's if that is true, then we would send an email to and then uh, workflow error. 
and you send an email or raise a ticket to wherever you want to do. In other instances, what I do is I have an email address set up within um, alerting. And I just send the email to alerts and that goes to our support mailbox. Um, but you can just po post a note or not have it at all. Uh, just for completeness. So that is how I would solve that particular problem. Um, I think the requester probably wanted to do a bit more dynamically on the form, which unfortunately in Fresh, a lot of you know, you can't do a lot of that um, dynamic scripting in the forms, but that's my best workaround. So hopefully that's helpful and useful today. So if you do need any help with Fresh, um, consulting, support, um, an extra pair of hands with Fresh, we're here on hand to do that for you. So just give us a give us a bell at the details in the bio and we'll see you again soon. Bye.